Hi, this is Dr. Nell Sampatakos from Pro Sport, and today I'm presenting a case of a trochleoplasty along with an MPFL reconstruction and a lateral retinacular lengthening. And these are a group of procedures that we do to help stabilize the patella in scenarios where the end of the femur is abnormally shaped in a way that predisposes to recurrent patella dislocations. So here on the left, we see a normal femur uh, with this nice valley or groove, and that helps stabilize the patella really well. On the right, we see this convex surface. We call this trochlear dysplasia, and that does a very poor job of keeping that kneecap stable. It allows for these recurrent dislocations. So this particular surgical case involves a 14-year-old female with bilateral trochlear dysplasia who underwent the same procedure on her left knee by myself six months ago. And here we can see the images from that surgery. Uh, this is a, the convex surface here of her distal femur, and we've gone ahead and reshaped it and given her a new valley there. And we can see sutures there on the surface of the cartilage. Those do absorb over time. And then we went ahead and rebalanced her knee with the MPFL reconstruction and the lateral lengthening as well. So here we're looking at that uh, left knee that's been completed and you can see how nice and stable that patella is compared to the right knee and how we're able to dislocate that patella even in 30 to 45 degrees of flexion. So it's quite unstable. So we're gonna go ahead and perform the same procedure on her right knee now. And this is uh, us making an initial incision over the lateral side of her knee. And we begin by dividing this lateral retinacular tissue into two layers uh, that will allow us to lengthen these tissues at the end of the surgery uh, to help rebalance that patella. So here we see the superficial and deep layers of the lateral retinaculum that we've now created. I then cut through the deep retinaculum in the capsule. I place several pin retractors so that we can adequately see. Uh, and then I mark out the end of her femur. And uh, in doing this, I note the location of her current groove and the location of the new groove. Now for the surgeons out there, by lateralizing this central groove, uh, we are essentially reducing the TTTG, obviating the need for a tibial tubercle osteotomy in many cases. So now I'm beginning to elevate all of the cartilage off the end of her femur, and I'm doing that with these osteotomes, uh, which are essentially like chisels. And this is important because we need to resect some bone at the end of her femur to recreate that valley. So I need to elevate the cartilage to protect it and access that bone. This is a fairly tedious process because we certainly don't want to breach the cartilage. Uh, and so we need to be very cautious in terms of how we go about doing this. So once I've adequately elevated the cartilage, I then place one of these osteotomes down the central aspect of the new groove. Uh, and I use that as a, a reference point to uh, remove bone wedges, uh, both from the lateral side and the medial side, recreating that new valley. And I'm essentially trying to recreate a, what we call a lateral trochlear inclination angle of about 20 degrees. And, and so we begin by removing those bone wedges, and then I use this high-speed burr, which is a little bit like a Dremel tool, to just recontour and smooth out those surfaces uh, and then following that, I use it to thin the flap of cartilage and bone. And I need to do this because we have to uh, create some mobility or flexibility within this flap so that I can uh, compress it down into the new groove and allow it to mold uh, without cracking uh, the cartilage. And so here we see that new valley that I've created. And this is the chondral flap that we've elevated, allowing us to access that bone. So once that chondral flap is flexible enough that I can mold it completely to the distal femur, we want to go ahead and secure it in that manner. And we do that using devices called suture anchors that we place through the cartilage and into the bone. Now these suture anchors are loaded with absorbable sutures, so after several months they will completely disappear and we'll be left with a very smooth surface for that patella to slide in. So here I'm inserting the first suture anchor into the bone, and once I've done that we then uh, divide up the sutures and load them into additional anchors and we insert those while I'm firmly maintaining the the chondral flap uh, into the new groove there. So in most cases we end up placing four suture anchors which does a very nice job of securing that flap to the end of the bone and allows it to heal quite well. And once we've completed uh, this portion of it, we're essentially done with the trochleoplasty component of the surgery. And so here on the left, we can see the convex surface before the trochleoplasty and the new concavity that we've created on the right. So now that we have our new groove for the patella, we have to do some soft tissue balancing. 
uh, allowing the patella to track centrally in the new groove. And so we do that by performing what we call a medial patellofemoral ligament reconstruction or MPFL reconstruction. That's going to help keep the patella stabilized medially. Uh, and then we also have to lengthen the soft tissues laterally. So here is a graft we're going to use for the MPFL reconstruction. We're going to secure two limbs of this graft into the patella, which we place under x-ray guidance. And once those two limbs are secure, we're going to shuttle the graft down to the medial aspect of the femur through a small incision, and we're going to pass that graft into the end of the femur. So this MPFL graft is going to behave a little bit like a check rein in that it's going to prevent the patella from dislocating laterally. So once it's secure in the femur, we have to really dial in the tension just right so it's not too tight or too loose. And so once we've gone ahead and done that, we're going to take some final x-rays, we're going to examine the patella, and when we're perfectly happy, we're going to go ahead and close the incisions. And again, we do this in a way that lengthens those lateral tissues by about a centimeter and a half in this case. And that's going to, again, help rebalance the patella. So that completes our case. Uh, these patients go home the same day. They have no range of motion or weight-bearing restrictions. And in general, they're a very happy group of patients uh, with their new stable knee. So I hope that's helpful. This is Dr. Nils Sampatakos with uh, ProSport, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care.